notes and give it up for Ethan Tate, please. All right. Is it possible to get the slides up there? Yes. Right. Just kind of hold that kind of close. If All you right. Want, I, and I'll get your slides up. Cool. I'll, I'll do a little song and dance while we're getting the slides up. Hopefully, the <laughs> folks on Zoom can see it as well. Um, but uh, yeah, as Tracy said, uh, my name is Ethan Tate. Um, I am uh, technically a donor relations manager for grants and scholarships at the Charlottesville Area Community Foundation. Um, I'll talk about it in a second, but there, there are a lot of different ways that dollars flow through any community foundation, including ours. Um, my focus is on all of the donor and committee advised grant programs. So I'm gonna focus on that because I think that's fairly relevant to this group today, but there are other ways to do it um, as well. So uh, there's a lot of slides here. Uh, the intent is for this to be a takeaway for all of you to kind of see this after the fact. If, if I blow through something here, you'll have a chance to look at it again later. Um, but Tracy, you can go ahead and go through. Okay. All right, so um, a community foundation, uh, like a lot of foundations, casts a really wide net. Uh, there are many different kinds of programs that we are interested in funding, and we are uh, accountable to the community and the, all of you in the community for how those funds are allocated. Um, on the next slide, you'll see uh, the ways that dollars flow into the Charlottesville Area Community Foundation and the, the ways that dollars flow out of the Charlottesville Area Community Foundation. It's small here, but um, I'll, I'll highlight a couple of big uh, picture things. Uh, the community foundation is made up of individuals from Charlottesville, Albemarle, and the surrounding counties east of Shenandoah National Park and Blue Ridge Parkway. So um, all of the areas around uh, Charlottesville, Albemarle are included in our focus area. We write plenty of grants, or we, we make plenty of awards to organizations all over the country and all over the world. Those grants that land outside our service area are always coming from donor advised funds. So there's folks in the area who want to set up a philanthropic fund. They can fund whatever they want, whatever nonprofits they want with that funding. I'm going to talk today about the work happening specifically in our area. Um, how do, we, how do we review these grants? How do we score them? How do we decide who gets funding? As Billy said, there is always more requested than we can support, especially in this last year and a half. So this is an example of kind of one of the rubrics for things that we are looking for in applications that come in. We're looking for how closely aligned is the proposal to what the grant says it wants to fund. What kind of capacity does the applying organization have to actually fulfill this program or this need in the community? Uh, how engaged is the organization in the community they are serving? I'll go on a little bit of a tangent here. I think it's a really interesting uh, progression in community foundations across the country. We've been around for over 50 years now and for a long time when, when community foundations start out, they really focus on the donors, the donors, the donors. What do the donors need? What do the donors care about? It's all about the donors. At a certain point, some community foundations kind of progress on to the next level and they say, well, what do the organizations need? What do the community organizations need? What do the nonprofits need? What, what, do, the, what do the organizations need from us? And I think beyond that, there's another phase that we're starting to, to get into which is similar, but I think it's, there is a distinction there where we're starting to ask, well, what does the community itself need? What does the community say the priorities are? Which organizations are addressing what the community says they need? And how can we be supporting the community through those organizations? So it's a subtle difference, but I think it's a really important part to highlight in any applications you're submitting to the Community Foundation. So that's the engagement and equity pace, piece. Uh, financial stewardship. Does the organization seem to have an accounting practice in place? When we go back after this grant has been awarded, will they be able to tell us where it actually went? Um, does it seem like they have a solid income? Does it seem like their funding is going out to help the community in a, in a meaningful way? And then finally, impact. Is the organization actually, to Billy's point earlier, are they measuring what they 
say they want to do? Do they have specific goals in mind? And, you know, we recognize that nonprofit work and community work, kind of fixing some of these systemic issues in our society is not all sunshine and rainbows and unicorns. We recognize that sometimes that data might not come back in the most positive way or tell the story you want to tell. We get that and we appreciate that and we, we appreciate the fact that you're tracking that even if it's uncomfortable. And so uh, we really value transparency in how that work is happening. And, and we recognize so many of us on staff at the foundation have been on the other side of it, have been in the community doing the work. And we recognize the challenges that are there. So being transparent in that in your reporting is super helpful and super valuable to us. All right, next one. We can go through these real fast. You can just blow through it. All right, so how to get to uh, more information about the grants. On our website, um, there is a section dedicated to grants. There are highlights that is updated regularly for you to see uh, what the upcoming deadlines are and all of that. Uh, it will be in a follow-up email, I'm sure, but CACF Online is our website, um, CACFonline.org. Um, you can find all the important information there. So there are a handful of donor or committee advised competitive grant programs at CACF that I help to manage. Um, I'm going to talk about primarily the first uh, two slash three on that list because I think they're most relevant to this group, um, but there are several others as well and I'll, I'll stick around through the break uh, if, if people have specific questions. Uh, one of the more uh, well-known grant programs uh, run at CACF is the Bama Works Fund. Uh, that's the philanthropic wing of the Dave Matthews Band, which started in Charlottesville uh, back in the 90s. Uh, if I could go back and tell the high school version of me that I'm going to help manage the philanthropic uh, giving of the Dave Matthews Band, my little high school brain would just explode. Um, <laughs> But that is a grant program that's been around for over 20 years. It has grown to the point where uh, now we need two different grant rounds to just be able to manage the number of applications that come in. You can go to the next slide. This is a little bit small. I apologize for folks in the room, but I'll read through the pertinent details. Um, the next uh, application window will be January 15th to March 15th. Uh, it is an online application. Um, and it's for gifts up to $10,000. Organizations are invited to apply once every 12 months. Um, and really, there is no, beyond organizations doing good work in our community, there is no real uh, specific programming priority for that grant program. They just want to be funding good organizations doing good work. Um, you go back. Oh, sorry. sorry. Um, so for that grant program, we have a review committee that gets out into the community, meets the applicants, um, and uh, we get those. Uh, if the deadline is March 15th, the next uh, checks will be coming out on uh, mid-June. And uh, then we do it all over again starting July 1st to September 1st as the second application window in any given year. We're in the midst of reviewing the most recent applications right now. And then those summer slash fall applications get re uh, responses by Thanksgiving or so. All right. And the Louisa County Community Fund. This is a smaller grant program, but I think especially relevant to the folks here in the room. Um, this is about um, seventy-five dollars to $80,000 each year uh, available to be awarded in grants typically up to about $10,000, maybe $15,000 uh, for both the Bama Works Fund and the Louisa County Fund, I will say, um, partial funding is really common. So as Sarah was talking about earlier, uh, we might not be able to meet all of the needs, but if we can contribute to good work, we're happy to do so. For the Louisa County Community Fund, there are a couple of, uh, I would say, slight preferences. Um, any organization working in any sector of the nonprofit world is welcome to apply. 
but there is a slight preference for volunteer-based emergency response, like volunteer firefighter rescue squad kind of organizations. Uh, housing organizations, whether it's new housing or renovations and repairs. Disaster response, things like the Red Cross or, or organizations working in disaster scenarios. And then child care, senior care, care for adults with special needs. Um, those kinds of organizations have, like I said, just a slight uh, edge in that uh, committee review process, as well as organizations that are not just working in Louisa County, but specifically based here. That's a committee that cares a lot about making sure that Louisa County voices are kind of front and center in the work that's being done. Um, the next application window for that is same as Bama Works, January 15th to March 15th. It's the same application. We try to make it fairly easy. So you can submit one application and have it go to both different committees. Um, yeah, I'll touch on a couple of the others. Um, if anybody is working in uh, environmental sustainability and, and environmental um, lifestyle changes, the Eco Living Fund might be one that's worth checking out. And anybody who's working specifically with seniors and ways in which um, lives of seniors can be improved, whether through um, critical needs that they have or, or social needs. Um, the Twice as Nice Fund uh, is an option as well. Uh, Twice as Nice, for those who uh, don't know, is a, a series of thrift stores and secondhand stores in Charlottesville. The last year and a half, as you can imagine, has been rough for their retail sales, but we're hoping that'll be back to kind of a, a full-fledged grant program in 2022, in the fall, summer slash fall of 2022. Um, and that one is really focused on seniors. Gifts, uh, you know, in the five to $15,000 range, really, really focused on seniors. And then I'll just leave you with this slide. Um, beyond the competitive grant programs that we offer at the foundation, there are two other opportunities I wanna make sure folks are aware of. Uh, the first is we have a newsletter that goes out to all of our fund holders, probably 80% of the funds that leave the foundation go through that donor advised door. So it's not grant programs that I manage. It's not our, it's not the foundation's own money that we're deciding what to do with. It's individuals who have funds at the foundation who don't require an application. They just wanna distribute to organizations they think are doing good work. There's two ways to get uh, connected with them. First is through the quarterly giving opportunities newsletter that goes out to them. If you're interested in writing up a little blurb, uh, we're happy to facilitate that and get that out to our several hundred fund holders. And then uh, the second one is, uh, you know, we don't wanna be uh, the middleman or the middlewoman in relationships between organizations and donors. We feel like we're just gonna screw that up. You all uh, have existing relationships. You wanna create new relationships. One of the best ways to do that is looking at uh, an impact report that'll be coming out um, in the next couple of weeks. That shows you all of our fund holders, shows you where all of the different gifts have gone. Um, and if you're looking at your donor lists and figuring out where, where are the prospects for more giving or, oh, I didn't even know this person is interested in philanthropy, looking at our impact report can really help you make those connections so you can be the one reaching out uh, based on, on those relationships. Um, so I'll stop there. Again, encourage you to check out our website, sign up for our email updates. A lot of information comes out through that. But if there's any questions, I'm happy to Anyone answer now. Is there any, do you have any idea when that 2020 impact report's coming out? It should be by the end of this month, now that we're in October. <laughs> yeah. Anybody have any other questions? I, I have a comment. I want to make a brief comment about the Louisa County Community Fund. I think it's not a fund that's set up by Louisa County and the taxpayers of Louisa County. It was set up years ago by the Bassanella family, and it's uh, designated specifically for Louisa County. And there's a lot of organizations in the county that I think probably the average amount is around 5,000, but it's very active in the county. That's yeah, that, that's a really great point. Um, it, it is a slightly misleading name, um, but it is. It was designated for Louisa County. It only supports work that is happening in Louisa County. 
ideally from organizations based in Louisa County, although some, some regional organizations get funding for their Louisa County programming through that fund. Yes, Is, uh, can we get this newsletter that you talked about just now? And then how do we sign up for that? Yeah, if you go to our website, cacfonline.org, uh, I think it's all the way at the bottom, there's a chance to sign up for our newsletter. Um, you can click on that there and, and enter your address. We try not to bombard you with, with superfluous information, but about every six, eight weeks or so, you'll get something from us with latest updates. Any other questions? All right. Great. Thank you, Ethan, Thank you. so much for joining us this morning.